discuss the rivals by Sheridan as a mirror of the 18th century English society. Marx, 10 to 12. Answer. Typical of a comedy of manners, Sheridan's The Rivals gives a vivid picture of the age in which it was written. However, it does not give a complete picture of the 18th century English life. In a satirical timbre, it presents mainly the fashionable aristocratic people whose life was a continual round of pleasures, intrigues, and amours. The scene of action here is Bath, a fashionable health resort of England in the 18th century, where the well-to-do came to drink life to the lees. The 18th century was an age of elaborate formalities among the aristocratic people, the formalities being observed even among fathers and sons. The sons could see or meet their fathers only by previous engagement. Captain Absolute's sending of Fag, his servant, to arrange his father for meeting with him clearly reflects the elaborate formalities in the 18th century. A reference is also made to the poor sanitary condition of the Abbey of Bath. Sheridan deftly hints at the hygienic hazards caused by the burial of a large number of dead bodies inside the churchyard and the frequent opening of those graves. Through Sir Lucius, this growing nuisance of the beautiful town of Bath is dramatically indicated. The play alludes to the existence of the circulating libraries in England during the time. These libraries were the happy haunts of young men and women like Lydia, with their brains charged with romantic and idealistic notions of love. Lucy's words to her mistress indicate how there was a rush for books in such libraries, the popular books of the time being mainly sentimental novels and cheap romances. In the 18th century, the fashion of wearing wigs was dying out except among a certain number of professional men. Fag considers Thomas backdated because he still wears a wig. In a tone of remonstrance, he says to Thomas in the opening scene of the play, Here now, this wig. What the devil do you do with a wig, Thomas? None of the London whips, of any degree of ton, wear wigs now. In the portrait of Mrs. Malaprop, Sheridan is found to have finely caricatured the tendency of the well-to-do countrywomen of the 18th century to imitate fashions of the city and show off smartness as well as knowledge of city life. The ludicrous ignorance of such women is quite amusingly dramatized through Mrs. Malaprop's views and talk. Mrs. Malaprop represents those vain, self-important, hypocritical provincial women who were, according to Robert Herring, desperately trying to live up to the smartness of Bath, and be not too far behind London at the same time. Sir Anthony Absolute represents the orthodox, dogmatic, old views of the age with his bitter and specific prejudice against female education in particular. Sir Anthony acts as the mouthpiece of Sheridan when he says to Mrs. Malaprop, had I a thousand daughters, by heaven I would soon have them taught the black art as their alphabet. Sir Anthony vividly symbolizes the parental tyranny exercised over the sons and daughters in the 18th century, the tyranny of which Sheridan himself is a helpless victim in his own life. Thomas Sheridan, the father of the dramatist, could never approve of his son's marriage with Elizabeth Linley. The manner in which Sheridan makes Sir Anthony strut and fret at his son's refusal to marry the girl of his choice, makes it evident that Sheridan is all out to make him the ludicrous butt of his satire, and thereby retaliates against the tyranny and obstinacy of his own father. Excessive sentimentality was common in many young people of the 18th century. Sheridan's presentation of Lydia's, singular taste, and Falkland's, silly sentimentality, well bears out the prevalent social temper of the age. In the 18th century the aristocratic ladies used to keep lap dogs and parrots. While describing the staff of Lydia in his usual exaggerated way, Fag says, She has a lap dog that eats out of gold, she feeds her parrot with small pearls. Moreover, dual fighting in love rivalry, strict prohibition of Minna's marriage without the guardian's consent, marriage by bands, embracing and kissing as ceremonious forms of greetings, all these prominent features of the 18th century's aristocratic life are well reflected in the rivals. Sheridan is the master of social manners and is primarily concerned with the superficial manners of the civilized society, its frailties, follies and vices. The picture Sheridan depicts in the rivals is realistic, his characters reflecting universal traits of mankind. 
The faithful depiction of this universality makes the rivals a landmark in the realms of English literary canon. Finished. Please subscribe to the channel for more updates of ready-made notes on English literature. Also, please share this channel to help any student pursuing a degree in English literature. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please do not forget to like and comment.